Yeah, oh, I press there. Well, the first thing I wanted to tell you is that your choice should be definitive. And when I say that it should be definitive, that means if you want to join an industry, you must join an industry with full understanding of all that it entails. You can have a cushy job as a lecturer and eventually become a professor. I'm sorry, I may be being a bit rude, but uh, uh, it is uh, quite predictable. Whereas in an industry, you might just get sacked the next week. So you have to understand that there is a quite a big difference when you are looking uh, at an industrial job. And it has to be clear in your mind. That's why I use the word definitive, because you have to uh, understand that you, you will appreciate all the perils that you will face in an industrial job, and that you will not succumb to pressure, because there is enormous pressure in industry. I'm a lucky guy because I decided to start a former startup company after retiring. And though, even though I've been working eight years uh, on my own, I understand the, the kind of pressure of an expectation that you have from an end user. So uh, that uh, definitiveness is, is very important. The next thing is what should you be looking at? You have to be very clear in your mind just like in a research program, you know that you want to do this. This is the plan that I have. I want this is my final objective. In a, uh, when you want to join an industry, you should know exactly what you're looking at. What are the uh, areas that you want? Are you a chemical engineer who wants to work on design? Are you a pharmacist who wants to make good biologics uh, or MABs or whatever? Or are you... Uh, a generalist or are you a specialist? You know, these are all options which are open to you. Then the other thing is, what is the industry looking at? How is it looking at you? So these are two uh, very important aspects and I would like to highlight each of these independently. That is, what should you be looking at and what is the industry looking at? Okay? So let's start. The first thing, suppose you want to join a, a company. Now, what you have to do is you have to get all the kind of information that you want about the company before you actually think of uh, wanting to join that company. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You are looking at uh, half a dozen companies and hoping that one of them would employ you. But it is my experience, personal experience, that when I'm interviewing a candidate for a job, I expect him to know him to know at least something for a, about my company, and what are these? What is this something? Yeah, detailed information about the company, reputation, size. You know, the reputation of the company is most important. I mean, you 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 may say I, I want to join Reliance and, you know, because it's reputed. Everyone knows that they have good pays, good salaries, and things like that. But it is reputed. The size is also important because, you know, sometimes people get um, frustrated in large organizations because you're working in a small area in a big company and you never get to work with the kind of flexibility that you may wish to work with. In which case, a small company or a middle-sized company is something which would get the better out of you. Unless, of course, you are wanting to work especially in that small restricted area and happy to do that for the next 20 years or 30 years or whatever. So size of the company is important. Uh, a little knowledge about the directors is very useful. Do your homework properly. Find out who are the directors, what is their background, how, how have they risen in their own organization, what do they expect. And most of these directors are probably known to people or you, you can get access to information and find out what, you, what, what to expect from this company. Annual reports, balance sheets are something which I would advise every uh, person to do. If you're a PhD, I understand that you have, uh, an act, you have an acumen for research. So it should come to you very easily. At the same time, it should also be a very important part of your activity in searching for a job that this company, how is it placed in the market? Is it doing well? Or is it sliding? Or uh, 
is, is it just a run-of-the-mill company? It's not seen to grow in years to come? Because your growth would depend upon the company's growth. And it's very important at, at this, this point of time to understand what is it exactly that you're looking for. Uh, balance sheets, I said, for the past four years at least, would be a, a priority amongst uh, the people who are looking for a job. And let me tell you, I also, when I recruit people, I find out what they, they know about my company or what do they know about the work that I'm doing because I'm interested to know how curious you are, right? So this information is, uh, I, I think, very, very, very important. Then <laughs> a very practical thing which I must tell you is find out how complicated their HR is. Because I know a lot of people who just get stuck for four months uh, working with HR and they don't get anywhere. If you are going through an individual within the company who you have got to know and he can help you out, then that's fine. But normally HR is just terrible in this, this land, in this, this country. They just drag you on and do all kinds of things to dissuade you from joining a, a particular company. And uh, it, it is very important that you bypass this by either reaching out to the, the person who's really interested in you. You know, that, that, that's important to the company. Then what are the uh, attrition rates? <laughs> You know, if you want to join a company and you want to stay there for, say, 10 years and do some notable work which will get you get uh, either a jump to another company or get recognition. But some companies just have such poor, uh, such high attrition rates that you know that people are not happy there. PhDs are not happy. You know, there is some kind of form of management who believes, oh, I can do well with MSCs and MTechs. I don't need PhDs. And unfortunately, there are companies, even in Pune, I know that, where people have left after, uh, after three, three months or six months or uh, at the most, the persistent uh, after two or three years. So uh, the attrition rate in your uh, company is very, very important when you're looking for a job there, okay? Then what are the, the other kind of uh, uh, benefits that the company offers? Because there are... Uh, tangible benefits, untangible benefits which companies offer. I mean, for example, if you're working somewhere outside the city, it, they might, you would need to have a good uh, uh, rec accommodation, reasonably good uh, schools for young children, or you might want to have some kind of entertainment which you would not expect uh, in uh, uh, very small uh, uh, towns. So these are the benefits that you have to look as a family. You know, you have to find out what are your interests, what are the things. If you are someone who doesn't necessarily like to commute every day and spend two hours of your day just commuting, then you might want to join a, a company in a smaller town. But these benefits have to be evaluated very critically. I mean, don't just think that, oh, no, no, I want to join this company. But if it is in a place which is say in uh, Jamnagar, like Reliance was in Jamnagar, then, then there is no life over there, you know. You just wed it to your company, the kids are not very happy, the wife says, oh, I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. So, so these are issues which are very real and which you must look at when you are thinking of uh, uh, joining a company. Now the skill set beyond your research experience, you know, these, uh, there are certain skill sets which all individuals have and which are needed uh, to be able to survive in a relatively or ex exceptionally hostile uh, condition in a, in a company. Some companies, there are uh, hostilities. I know a very good friend of mine who was in Reliance, who went all the way to the VP, and then he got tired of politics in the company, he just left, and he said, I'm, Frustrated. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of money. I'm getting a, a take-home package of 30, 40 lakhs, but I, what's the use? I have to keep, uh, you know, dealing with political things, and this is not what I would uh, like to do. So anyway, so uh, the other thing that is uh, that what are the areas that you're going to work on? Because 
Uh, as I said, there are products, there are key molecules. Then you have to understand what are these molecules, what is the life cycle of that uh, compound, is it something which will last like statins for um, months or year, for years altogether, or is it something which will just fade out after three years? Because your company's, uh, uh, your company's welfare depends on that, in indirectly your own welfare. So look at the uh, uh, molecules, look at what the co competitors' molecules are, are they uh, something which are different from them? Do you find that a, a competitor is growing at a much faster rate than the company that you propose to join? And uh, well, it's, it's, it's a very tough decision, but you have to make all these evaluations before you join that company. Also look at their current deficiencies of these compounds which are in the market and find out is that something uh, which you can offer to a company you're joining as a scope for improvement. Because all companies are competitive, and within the com uh, competition, you have to know how to survive in the, in the market. So uh, being a PhD, you would probably have uh, that good qual qualification of being uh, understanding how to go over overcome the deficiencies of particular products, or what are the options that you have. Because You've been doing research for a lot of time. You, uh, you know exactly how to look at uh, a scenario. Oops, sorry. Sorry, what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Then study of the technology because you know studying a, a particular technology in which you're working in. It may be anything. It may be pharma. It may be food technology. Uh, enzymes, environment, engineering. Uh, you have to understand the sector because each sector has its own uh, problems or deficiencies or advantages. If you look at something like uh, vaccine research, like Serum Institute, uh, they're doing extremely well and uh, they have probably a, f a phenomenal growth rate. But if you look at someone who's doing wastewater treatment, you, you accept the fact that you will not get a good uh, custom. You would probably not be able to grow the way uh, at the percentage that pharma companies are growing. Food companies are doing ex extremely well these days. Enzymes are not. Biocon sold their market, uh, their um, the single enzyme market completely because they realized that it was a waste of time and they went into pharma. So uh, every f industry has its uh, plus points and its uh, negative points. So after you have qualified in your discipline, and which I'm sure you have taken a lot of pains to understand what is the dis discipline that, that I want to qualify, which will give me a good industrial job. In which case, you have to be happy or content with whatever the limitations of the products that your, or technology which your company is doing. Because you can't change that, you know, you have, you're wedded to that. Unless you completely change your uh, area. And as one of the earlier speakers said, sometimes you, uh, you have, have to make a change and you have to learn on the job. And a lot of people do that and learn on the job and, you know, do well in an uh, industry. But these are the things that you have to understand. Then uh, if it's a lab job or a pilot plant job, uh, you are given, uh, you have to have good emphasis on systems. Because systems are the ones which industry uh, uh, really appreciate that you know. Because finally, your uh, Efforts will have to be on developing good methodology and a very high productivity because you know everyone is looking at cost. There's, not, there's no other uh, thing. So if it, you have it in you that yes, I can uh, deliver something which is uh, much better than what is going on just now, uh, that would help you a lot in uh, cementing your position in, in a company. Sorry. Reporting and documentation. Ah, oh, I can speak for hours on this. 
you know, re reporting and documentation is one of the most important aspects which is not taught to you in PhD. I have myself had PhD students, and we used to all have books or things like that. But in industry, the concept of reporting and documentation is completely different. See, if you are working in a pharma sector or in a chemical sector, or even in the engineering sector like uh, product design, you will be uh, need to have patterns. And when you have patterns, the first thing that the patent attorney looks at is, is what is your reporting? How have you reported things? And there are structured ways of doing this reporting uh, for, for, uh, for R&D or uh, production or pilot plant or production. So I would suggest to either Professor Rare that uh, you put a great emphasis on documentation and reporting because that, that is the, what will pay you in the end when you are looking at uh, products which are to be patented. I, I attended a very good lecture by a lady called Jyoti Kamath, who was, uh, you, some of you may be knowing her, uh, she was in Biocon for 30 years and she was responsible for uh, most of the patents which came out, out of uh, Biocon. Uh, she was telling me that you know, reporting is so important. How to maintain a record is something which no PhD guy teaches you. You will learn it only when you go to industry. And because, for example, when you write a record, you cannot scratch anything. You cannot overwrite. Uh, you can't read, uh, write something which is unintelligible. So th these things are checked by special people who are in uh, the patent, uh, in the area of patenting, who come and examine the patent return, will come and examine your record books and find out how good are you at, at recording. And I, I just hope and wish that all of you PhD students who wish to enter industry uh, believe in this immaculate uh, reporting and recording. This is so important, I tell you. And it is the most overlooked uh, area while you're doing your PhD. OK. Now, a lot of the products uh, which have uh, been covered by regulatory aspects. And regulatory, uh, regulatory aspects are uh, becoming an increasing env environment so, which, are, which are very critical for the development of products. So you have to know what, what the regulatory uh, rules are whilst you're developing a product. You, it may be that you can't use this material, starting material, or this uh, impurity is uh, unacceptable. So when you're looking at the re regulatory, there are many aspects to regulatory. For example, even when you're doing uh, 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 equipment selection. You have statutory requirements on uh, uh, qualifications of uh, dif difference. There's IQ, OQ, PQ. When it comes to procuring equipment, you can't just say, oh, I like this fermenter very much. I'm going to buy it. No, it has to qualify for certain requirements which are uh, put by the FDA. Uh, there are many other uh, issues I'm, maybe I'm, I'm biased, I'm talking about bio, but this, uh, 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 I mean, the, the values of, of, of these uh, apply for all industry, whether it's food or it's enzymes or it's uh, chemical engineering, whatever. For example, you have to understand what is the prep, uh, drug master files, how do you prepare them? What, is, what goes into a drug master file? What is a process? How, how well is a process followed in the course of your work in the industry? Is, are there any deviations? If there are any deviations, you have to note them and point out the reason for these deviations. All this comes into play when you are making products of quality. If you're turning screws or something like that, it's all right. But then if you're, you're all PhDs now and you're, you're expected to perform in a manner which is befitting for the industry that you've joined. So what I, what I would like you to understand is that these are some of the uh, qualities which you must possess 
you can in fact do it while you're doing your PhD. You can uh, uh, look at courses, do courses which teach you regulatory affairs. You know, there are very good courses now available and you can understand that, yes, I'm doing this, but then what is my impact on uh, going to be when I started manufacturing? You know, that's uh, a very, so it's very critical. I, I come back to my first thing, it's very definitive. Do you want to join industry? If you do, you have to think of all these things right in advance. <laughs> now, what does the industry expect from you? See, they're going to give you a, a, a job, and they will identify some uh, key or critical parameters for which define the product. And you are supposed to understand them whilst you're at the interview. Because they will probably tell you, oh, I do this. Do you know anything about it? Uh, so they say, yes, you have to uh, look at these, this, this, one, two, three, four. And that's what impresses people in interviews. Uh, that, that lands you the job. So these uh, identification and understanding of critical parameters is, is a very important thing, which you have to study for your particular industry, how it applies and how uh, you will be able to face an interview when questions are asked on it. As a PhD candidate, you know, great things are expected of you because, you know, PhD. And uh, your understanding of these issues is equally important when it comes to uh, uh, applying for a job. You have to understand what it is to, uh, what, what the job means to you in terms of your knowledge base for these particular qualities that I've talk, been talking about. Yeah. So there are some industries which have uh, very narrow skill sets, you know. So if you uh, have done your PhD in, uh, in chemistry, uh, you may be assigned to doing things like IR or uh, NMR or mass spec. And you become uh, the person who's uh, everyone is respond uh, uh, is hoping will pro you will provide the information that they give by way of analytical support and things like that. So it's a very focused uh, thing. I just gave one example. There are many things which are very focused, and uh, if you are qualified in that area and you uh, would like to work in this area, then this focus thing is very important. There are some which are just a generalist. And uh, one of my earlier speakers has also said that you are expected to know many things, not just your core subject, but also subjects which are related to it, or may not even be directly related, but you have, should have good reading and understand. So when you're, say, in a, I'll give you an example of a, uh, uh, when you're working in cosmetics, uh, I, knew, I know a person who worked at Marico. And he says, I, you know, I can't tell you, Sanjay, that this job is not so easy as I, as I thought it was because there are so many uh, things which are expected, uh, you expect to know which are beyond your uh, normal uh, uh, learning. So you have to be very alert, you have to be very well read, a, a wide range of uh, subjects on which you should be conversant with. And uh, so these are the, basically the two. What is the focus jobs? What are the differentiated jobs which uh, you have to do a lot of things? Now, what does the industry expect from you? See, the industry will be investing in a big pay package to you. So your output and your uh, uh, performance will be decided by the following factors. Uh, you should explain to them what your long-term goals are, which normally one asks the question which one asks in, a, in an interview. Uh, are you willing to stay in a particular location in your job? And you have to uh, show your ability to work beyond the company's expectations. I mean, you know, everyone uh, thinks that this is my job, I, I will do my job, but no. The ones who are selected finally are doing uh, something which are beyond, like training of juniors or suggesting products. Even this happens in an interview, you know. This has happened to me, uh, interviewing someone who said, uh, I asked him, I, I would like you to have experience in that. 
I said, hey, that's fine, that's good. Why, why don't you think of this one, this other product also, which has the following uh, benefits? So uh, it, it is uh, very important that you should be able to convince the management that who's interviewing you that yes, I'm not just going to do the job, I'm going to do something beyond that. And that's very important. Ah. <laughs> Keep uh, a salary and emoluments right till the end. Don't even broach this during the interview about salary. I had two or three candidates who came to me, and the first question they asked me is, what is the package? Uh, I said, sorry, uh, the interview is over. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is an important which many people make. And I, I thought I should warn you specifically against this because everyone thinks that uh, everything is de dependent on salary. It isn't. It's only after the interviewing committee is satisfied that, yes, you're, you're good, then they may also uh, raise the questions themselves. Uh, what are your expectations? And then you can move, move in. So don't put it, make it, do it yourself. Wait for uh, things to come as a natural consequence during an interview. The interview is very important, you know. I mean, you, that's, that, that's what gets you selected in the job. So all these things which I've told you are building up to your interview and they are being selected. Then once you're selected, then you perform. That's. So all the best in your endeavors to get a job. Thank you. <laughs>